Hello, it's Gary Fox of Create and Make. And uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about energy. But a little different way of thinking about energy. Think about energy, energy storage in short terms. So we're going to talk about rubber bands. Storing the energy that I just put into it when I stretched it. And now that i got turned loose, I don't think I want to do it quickly. <laughs> and we're going to talk about the energy in hammers. But where we're really headed is talking about some electrical components called a capacitor and an inductor. Um, but while we're at it, we'll talk about some thermal storage. Uh, and it turns out that they're all kind of very, very, very similar. Uh, there's a term in electrical called power factor. Well, you and I are experiencing power factor in a different situation right now. Uh, we're heading toward the shortest day of the year here in North America. But the coldest day of the year will come about 20 days after the shortest day of the year. So there's a time lag here. That time lag is an interesting little subject to think about. Um, and it's actually given terms in electrical. That's the power factor. So we will be heading on talking about all of those. Okay, now the hammer. Hammer, as we talk about it right now. Hammer gets its energy when I start swinging it. And the amount of energy in that hammer is basically equal to the speed squared. It's called mv squared, the mass of the hammerhead, times the velocity squared as I hammer on a nail or my thumb usually. <laughs> and uh, release all that energy. The energy in a uh, in a rubber band or a spring actually is equal to related to the distance, the distance that is being stretched. So this one's related to distance. This is related to velocity. The velocity is equal to distance divided by time. So, man, now we're already into the fourth dimension here, the dimension of time. So what happens if we take the hammer and we put it on a rubber band and we release it? Okay, eventually it's going to settle down and it's going to stretch the rubber band the amount of energy that gravity is pulling the hammer down. But when we first turn it loose, it overshoots. And then it goes back. Well, the reason it overshoots is because the hammer is moving. And so the hammer has excess energy in it. So it pulls the rubber band past the point where the rubber band wants to go. And then the rubber band now has excess energy, so it pulls the hammer back up. Again, having the hammer to move, so the hammer overshoots and then goes back down. So those two are kind of like 180 degrees. This one is at maximum energy, the rubber band, when it's maximum stretched, and the hammer's at maximum energy when it's moving the most. So between those two, uh, we have an interesting little motion occurring, which is related to AC electricity. The same thing happens. Uh, the inductor and the capacitor together form something called a tank circuit, which was given that name because it was as if it was two tanks and water was sloshing from one tank to the other. So again, that has the kind of the same thing. The same deal with the earth as we talk about temperature and storage of the temperature in the earth. Um, as the earth, uh, as the days get shorter and there's less energy coming in from the sun, the earth uh, stores less. But it still has some in reserve, so it tends to make it last a little bit longer than the uh, shortest day of the year. And the hottest day of the year is usually about 20-some days after the longest day of the year. So, where we're heading is those equations. And uh, we will talk about the release of... That didn't work too good. The release of energy of these things. I ain't doing too good here. In my rubber band gun are not getting along. 
Uh, so that's the subject we'll be talking about. Meanwhile, just remember I'm the crazy old man. Guns don't kill people. I kill people. If a gun would shoot. There we go. Now I have a good one.